Today, I'm going to update the tutorial for the Microsoft 365 integration in Home Assistant. Many things have changed since the original one, so it's about time to make a new one. And if you're ready, let's go! Since maintaining the bit codebase with many features can become harder and harder due to the increasing complexity, Roger, the developer, decided to separate each service in individual integrations. So now you can install all the integrations for the services you need. You can install them using these buttons on my website. But before we dive into today's video, let me give a shout out to our sponsor, PCBWay. The seventh PCBWay Design Contest has just started. It's an exciting contest where you can showcase your creativity and innovation in electronics and mechanical design. The contest aims to inspire more people like you to join the electronics community. Participants can win all sorts of prizes, like cash and cool tech gadgets. You have until January 19, 2025 to send your designs. The results will be announced on March 10th. If you want to know more, you can go to their website. The link will be in the description. Thank you PCBWay for sponsoring this video. As I said before, you should only install the services that you want to use. If you see this message, just click OK. Right now, the integrations are not in the default hacks repository. So, until then, you will see this message that will allow you to add this custom repository to hacks. After you finish, we need to restart Home Assistant. For this, go to Developer Tools and click on Restart. And after it's finished, go back to my website. Now, the configuration is all managed using the graphical interface. After you restart Home Assistant, you can use these buttons on my website to configure it. For this, we will need the client ID and secret of an app we need to create on the Azure portal. I explain more of this on my free voice assistant text-to-speech and speech-to-text in Home Assistant using Azure Video. So check it out to see how to get a one-year free access to the Azure services. It's more complicated than that. It's not everything free. Some services only have a free tier that you can use monthly. But after you exceed the limits, we'll start charging you based on the exceeded use. And as you can see, Microsoft Venture ID, the service we need to use integrations, is indicated as always being free. This is now mandatory. Since the middle of 2024, Microsoft has mandated that any new app registrations must be created within an Entra ID directory. And for this, you'll need to sign up for a pay-as-you-go account. If you already ended your first year trial, I am going to show you how to upgrade your free account to a pay-as-you-go account. From this, from the Azure portal, just click on the pay-as-you-go sign up button. Then click on upgrade your account. Here we can check what happens after I upgrade. You get the remainder of free services from your previous free account, plus more than 25 products that are always free. Beyond what's free, you pay only for what you use each month and you can cancel anytime. Now select your country code and enter your phone number. And then click on text me for a text message or call me to get a call. And here just scroll down and select basic. And then click on upgrade to pay as you go. In my case, I got this error, so let's click on create a new subscription. Let's just click on next. Next, here on amount, let's add $1 and enter a name. And then click on review and create. And then click create. And now, if you reload the page, you'll see that we have our subscription active. And if you ever want to cancel your subscription, just scroll down and go to subscriptions. Select the subscription. And from here, you can cancel your subscription at any time. And check the actual cost. Hey, if you find this video useful, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And now go back to my website and here you can click on this link to go to the Microsoft Entra app registration. Here click on new registration. Give it a name. And here you can select any multi-tenant account. 
then scroll down and here first select web and now go back to my website and here just copy and paste the redirect URL then click on register now from the overview page copy in the application client ID then go to certificates and secrets and here create a new client secret fill a description and select an expiration date then click on add and then copy the value remember the value not a secret and now go to api permissions and here we need to add the permissions for the services that we want to use. For this, click on that permission. Here, select Microsoft Graph. And then click on delegated permissions. Now, we need to add the permissions for the services that we want to use. We can find this on the documentation. For this, go back to my website. And here, if you scroll up, you can find here the documentation for each integration. Each service will require a different set of permissions. So check the permissions for the service that you want to add and add them to your app registration. Once you finish, just click on add permissions. And now go back to my website and here you can use these buttons to configure the integrations with the ID and the secret that we just created. Here enter a uniquely identifying name for the entities. Then enter your client ID and your client secret. You can check the specific configuration variables in the documentation of each integration. Once you finish, just click on submit, then click on this link. And here click on accept. Then just copy and paste this URL into the box in Home Assistant and then click submit. And then finish. Repeat the same for all the services that you want to add. If you did everything right, you should now have something like this. And that's it. The entities from the integrations work the same as they did before. So you can use examples I showed on my last video to see how to use them on an automation. You can also use them with my Office 365 card. The integration now uses the new task sensor so you can use the entities with the default task card in Home Assistant. You can still use it for the inbox and Teams sensor. If you are still using the legacy integration, you should move to the new ones before November 2025. And that's it. With this, you should be able to use the new Microsoft 365 integrations in Home Assistant. And if you want help with Home Assistant, you can book a one hour meeting with me, so we can take a closer look at your smart home and help you achieve the seamless automation experience based on your needs, so you can actually make your smart home help you achieve your goals. If you like my work, please consider becoming a member on Patreon like all these amazing people. If you can become a member, you can always donate whatever you like using the button on our website. And if you can't do that, don't worry, just remember to comment on this video and share it with your friends. We truly appreciate all your support. And don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. I'll see you on the next video. Bye!